we know that area is length times width. Area is equal to length times width. If you aren't familiar with using multiplication to find the area, I suggest you pause this video now and go practice that first. Since we know that length times width equals the area, how is that gonna help us solve this? Well, 48 divided by three can also be solved by saying 48 equals something times three because multiplication and division are inverse operations of one another. So if 48 divided by three equals something, that means three times something equals 48. Now it helps to know your multiplication facts in order to get through this process, but something that I found that's helpful for me is if I list all of the multiplication facts of my divisor. So we're dividing by three. So I listed all the multiplication facts for the number three, well at least from numbers one to 10. Length times width equals 48. Something times three is gonna give us 48. We can decompose this 48 into smaller numbers. I may not know three times what is gonna give me 48, but if I break it into smaller numbers, I might know. So for example, I know three times 10 is 30. So how about we decompose this 48 into 30 plus something? Well, how much is gonna be left over? 30 plus what is gonna be 48? 30 plus 18, which, oh, come on, that's perfect. Because look at this, 18 is also a multiple of three. So that just worked out too perfectly, which by the way, it might not always work out that perfectly, but this time it did. Instead of saying three times something is gonna give me 48, I decompose this 48 into 30 and 18. Three times something's gonna give me 30, three times something's gonna give me 18, and then we can bring that together. Thanks to my multiplication facts that I already have listed, I already know the answer to these. Something times three equals 30, I know that's 10. 10 times three equals 30. Same thing here, something times three is gonna give me 18, or well, I know that's six. Six times three equals 18. So what we've done so far is three times 10 and three times six. Together, that's gonna be a total of 16. 10 plus six, this whole side length is a total of 16, which means 48 is equal to three times 16. 48 divided by three is 16 because three times 16 equals 48. Now this example that we have here is a much larger number plus it's not gonna work out as perfectly as that last one did. I mean, they're just not always gonna be that smooth. So there's some strategies that we can use to help us get through it. I already set up my model and I also listed all of the multiplication facts for the number six since my divisor is six. We're gonna start off by decomposing the number 856 into smaller numbers. But again, we're gonna use those numbers that are friendly with the number six because, well, that's our divisor. Now, 856 is a rather large number. None of these factors are even close to it, but good thing I know about extended facts. Because listen, if 10 times six is 60, then that means 100 times six is 600. I can go ahead and start decomposing my 856 with the number 600. Ooh, extended facts. Look at that, helping us out. So a good chunk of this area is going to be 600. How much do we still have left, you might ask? Well, there's still 256 that we need to account for. Now, we can keep on decomposing. This 256 can still be broken down into smaller numbers, but again, we're going to focus on numbers that are multiples of 6. When I look at my multiplication facts for the number 6, I see that four times six is 24, which means 40 times six must be 240. Look at those extended facts coming into play again. Let's hear it for the extended facts. So let's go ahead and decompose 256 into 240 plus, well, how much is gonna be left over? There's still gonna be another 16 left over. So 600 plus 240 plus 16 is gonna give me 856. But wait, we're not done because we can keep on decomposing. That 16 is not quite a multiple of six. So let's decompose that into a number that is like 12. 12 is a multiple of six. We can't use 18, that's too large but we can use 12, which means we're still gonna have four left over, but you'll notice this four 
it's smaller than six. There's no whole numbers that we can multiply six by in order to get four. So we're just gonna tuck that away to the side for right now. So something times six is gonna give us this area right here. Well, we already did all of the math. Something times six is gonna give me 600. That's 100. 100 times six is 600. 40 times 6 is 240, and 2 times 6 equals 12. The math is already done for us. We did it earlier. This length right here, the 100, the 40, the 2, 142, it's finding the area of this green section right here. This 4 was never accounted for. And again, we're going to come back to that in just a second. But if we look at this, 6 times 142 is going to give us this section right here, which is 852. 600 plus 240 plus 12 is 852. That's not our dividend. This is where that 4 comes in. We have a remainder of 4. This is what we know as a remainder. Our real answer is 142 with a remainder of 4. Remember, we were trying to solve what are we going to multiply times 6 to get 856. But well, we know 142 times 6 will get us 852, but we still got 4 left over. So if we add that 4 to 852, that'll get us to 856.